The Galatia effect is insane because it's part of the fundamental mindset into ensuring that you have a highest or most desirable grade that you can have. If you don't know what Galatia effect is or if you haven't heard of it beforehand, then this video is really important for you. Hi everyone, I'm Aidan, a medical student studying in England and consider clicking on the subscription button if you haven't already, so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video on the topics such as studying productivity, life in my medical school and also any tech that I use on a daily basis that I can also showcase to boost your productivity and studying habits as well. So the Galatea effect is more so a phenomenon where having high expectations of your own self will eventually lead to high performances in that given field that you're having expectations of. It is, it is a theory that if you have high expectations of yourself in that given field, your performance will be of course high as well. However, if you have yourself with low expect if you start yourself with low expectations, performance at the end of it as a result will also be comparable to your mindset at the same time. This then as a result becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where you start off with that mindset and obviously because of that your end result becomes similar. Henry Ford explains this quite perfectly where he states that whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, is one of the predominant factors that will determine your performance as a result of it. The Galatea effect is so powerful because it's only because of the fact that once we do believe ourselves that we can achieve it, it becomes and reinforces that behavior subconsciously in, our, in the hopes of us actually achieving that thing or that desired grade that we want. The Galatea effect is so powerful that once we actually have start having be the belief in ourselves that we can achieve it, then it reinforces the idea of having certain behaviors that will obviously lead to that outcome as a result of it. This was the same for me as well. Back when I was in sixth form, I started to really aim higher for in order to achieve higher grades. And because of this mental mindset of me having to make up that I need to achieve higher grades, that allowed me to have the right habits and right steps in place, both internally in having the right mindset and externally having the right environment, people around and habits, which ensure that I'm able to get the desired grades as I want and resultantly I was able to achieve an A star in all of my subjects. This is not for me to actually more so brag about the grades that I want but uh, that I got but it was more so to actually more give myself as a like, prime example that because of the mindset that I had I started to study like an A star student and as a result because of those behavior changes it consequently came up with a result that was similar to all of the work input that I came and just because of that, it started to form a cycle where I became more in terms of believing myself that I'm able to achieve this. And because of that belief, I was started to work a lot harder and be able to also put more effort in towards and create such an environment along both socially and academically to ensure that I'm able to achieve the A star grade that I wanted. Doing this more so then further boosted my own morale that I am actually able to do this because I have all of these things in place. And then because of that morale, I started to study more enthusiastically and a bit more motivation. And that gave me even more motivation because of it. So this cyclical nature of things all started just because of the mind, having the mindset I can achieve just because of having the right confidence in yourself and the right mindset that you can. This means that anyone can have the mindset change as a catalyst to kickstart the cycle into believing that you can yourself in terms of then ensuring that you're creating the right appropriate behaviors into reinforcing the whole idea and the mindset behind it to make sure that they can actually be as achievable as a result of things. But however, having that catalyst and that critical factor to start the cycle and ignite the flame of enthusiasm and confidence in yourself would be a bit hard and it was hard for me and it's a bit hard initially to implement it at the same time since it was also for me having gone through it because i've gone through it i'll now be talking about how to best implement this whole idea so that you can best accompany this it can be a lot easier to, for other people to say, or for you to even say that, oh, I need to just believe in myself. But how can you actually start to believe in yourself to begin with? Since I fell into this scenario where I needed to have a better mindset and have the confidence to actually believe in myself that I was able to do this, I was fortunate enough to be introduced with a technique during mid sixth form that allowed me to have that mindset accompany me and accompanied me throughout this technique. 
and it was called the immersion technique. This is the whole technique where you surround yourself with incredible people. These can be geniuses in their field, experts in any topic that you're most so interested in. I wanted your mindset to actually grow, uh, for example, in terms of the degree that you're doing, or uh, the subjects that you've chosen for A-levels or even GCSE, or just your general enthusiasm that you have in terms of ensuring that you, this is the grade that I want in the subject. This could be both in person, in your social circles, friends, family, are both virtually by have, being able to immerse yourself with any books and autobiographies that they have written, any podcasts that they are doing, any lectures or webinars online that they have started, which you can watch to better have this immersion and surround yourself with such information so that you can have that information being downloaded down directly into your brain. All of these separate sources and immersing, immersing yourself with all of these geniuses of the fields, of, across different fields, you'll be able to then have this change or shifting of mindset within a few weeks, if not even a couple of months afterwards, where they're able to achieve all of these incredible things and discoveries which were able to have and change the mindset itself. You were able to then understand or uh, have a mindset where the success that you want, the success that you're looking for, the desired grades in terms of having a better understanding or uh, even to be able to accept, be accepted in a university or a degree that you want to do, doesn't seem that daunting only because of the fact that you have immersed yourself with all of these excellent information and knowledge that you have been absorbing throughout these past couple of months. One of the key things that you need to then understand after you have achieved this is the fact that understanding the whole idea of inspiration and motivation in your brain. One way in which I ensured that I continue to have this same mindset where have achieving the grades and being good in these exams doesn't seem out of reach is make thinking of have this inspiration and motivation as this golden liquid that's inside a funnel inside of my brain with and that funnel slowly and surely drips every now and then. Uh, so the motivation and inspiration that's inside of the funnel will slowly deplete over a course of time if I start to actually lose out on this immersion technique or if I stop watching any of these things that I've already made my own mindset to. And over time, if I stop it eventually, then I will be back to zero where all of these things which, in which initially started to feel impossible will be impossible only because of the fact that the inspiration that I've been able to gather over the course of period of time by understanding different experiences of people in the same field have depleted completely. To make sure that the funnel is topped up to the maximum, I need to have a regular basis of this immersion technique to make sure that even though at the bottom there's drops of inspiration and motivation down going down the drain, I'm still keeping the funnel topped up on a regular basis. And this can be done in three different ways. If you're more of a visual learner, then obviously, we, then things like Skillshare, where you have a bank and reservoir of videos to watch from these same experts, or even TED Talks on YouTube, where you, they a lot of people actually explain a lot of things and experiences that they are more so expert on. You can watch them on a regular basis to be more so become more of a habit of it. More for audio preferences. You can always download any audio audiobooks for biographies or books that you are more fascinated into reading to continue absorbing those type of things. Or even podcasts in the off chance that these, those people do have a podcast. You can always listen to that on a daily basis. At the same time, to allow that constant influx of inspiration and motivation so that you're not depleted at the end of it. So the idea over here is that for the immersion technique, it doesn't really matter which method of consumption that you intake. It's more so whether you actually stick to that consumption on a regular basis. Regular can mean every day, every two days, or even weekly, depending on the frequency of information that you can take and the availability of it at the same time. So that would then allow you to be able to form a habit of constantly taking inspiration and motivation throughout. I'll be honest with you, it's even more so important the fact that you have to do this on a regular basis because this type of inspiration and motivation, at least on a regular basis, does not come overnight. You have to spend a few months into getting into this so that you are able to 
form this into a habit and more so a discipline where each and every time you don't have to remember or you don't have to think about what you need to do next. You're able to immerse yourself with these experts so that you can have a bit more of an increase in knowledge and information as well as motivation so that you can still have that cyclical nature going where you're feeding yourself inspiration motivation which therefore enhances your mind so that you are able to actually achieve what you're setting out to achieve and that therefore embarks on the environment to change where you're changing your and shifting your behavior to ensure that the end result which is almost so that you desire can be achieved as much as possible it's so much so that i'm still riding on this again just because of how much of an impact it has been giving me for the past years and so since ever since i started to use it in sixth form it's so much so powerful that even there have been studies where people start to perceive others differently there was a harvard psychologist whom conducted an experiment using rats and a couple of his phd students where in that study he divided half of his students into group a and b where in one group he told that the rats were quite dumb and he told the other group that the rats were quite smart and they both were given the same sort of task to make sure the rats done a particular thing it was interesting since all of the rats had the same level of intelligence uh, but the results that came out of it, the group that perceived to have the rats with a higher intelligence took more of a care and time regarding to make sure that they actually understood and followed the instructions and tasks and learned it appropriately to that level compared to the other group who thought that the rats were not as, as intelligent and they really didn't bother it that much. There have been similar studies that have been conducted in where they can they have seen that high school teachers tend to actually th consider the students who have been more enthusiastic and motivated about their learning and have high expectations because of it tend to actually have the same sort of result and vice versa and the students who teachers think don't don't have as much of a high expectations of them of themselves tend to not have or achieve as highly compared to the ones that and do have high expectations. This means that generally this higher standard of oneself allows others to also treat you according to that so that they follow suit in terms of making sure that you learn in the best possible manner as what they can achieve in the same enthusiasm because what you're, because the enthusiasm that you reflect goes on to them and they can follow suit along with it. It's interesting how little of an things can actually change the mindset then. The changes to the mindset itself can then have really detrimental and incredible changes. One of the key things that I always say is that you are company of the five people that you spend the most time with. If you have been using the immersion technique appropriately, your company then becomes majority of the time the experts that you have been absorbing all of the information from. As a result from that, that can actually have a further boost in terms of how others perceive you, in terms of how they actually see that the people that you are actually spending most of the time with. As I mentioned, these people don't necessarily even have to be virtual. They can be in within your social circle, uh, people friend of a friend which you then further on later on know a bit and get to know a bit better. There is uh, however a short disclaimer that I should give you which is that uh, the whole idea about setting your own mindset and be having high standards for yourself. Say for example if you're already achieving grade C and then you have the mindset of achieving an A star is somewhat of a good mindset to have and a high standard to set for yourself but it needs to be a bit realistic. The whole idea and the keyword of realistic ambition comes into play and it becomes even more important here at the same time where your ambitions of having high standards needs to be realistic because otherwise if they're not what tends to happen is that it gives you a detrimental effect where it becomes and start and starts to demotivate you after a while where you, you have such high standards for yourself and you don't fall on that. This means that by having re a re realistic ambition for yourself, it sets you in the course of making sure that you don't have too much of a high standard for yourself and it can becomes as much of a productive and positive outcome in the long run because it, it's, it can be a progressive thing where you can say if you're, again, you, again using with the same analogy of being a C student, you can go forward and set your high standards to be, for example, I don't know, a B plus. Once this means that it's a bit more achievable for you in that sp uh, span of time. And from, forward from that, once you do achieve that A plus, rather than staying stationary, you can set another high standard that now I can achieve an A plus. 
and that becomes a progressive thing because you're achieving installs increments it becomes more of a reinforcement and a positive and because of these past achievements this skyrockets your enthusiasm enthusiasm and motivation to be more and do more as a result of it it's, it's really interesting how untr how simply just altering your mindset makes your behaviors and your habits to start lining with your goals that you have start you set yourself as well going on with the train of productivity. I have created a video on the Feynman technique, which is what I also use to have a better un conceptual understanding on any new topics, uh, any of the revision that I'm doing of older topics, so that I have a better and clearer understanding according to what is required from me. Have a watch of that. I'll provide a link for it so you can go and watch it immediately. Otherwise, thank you very much. I will see you in that video.